All right, so here we are, page 19. We're going to complete some of these types of problems, and I'm just going to show you what you would get in terms of directions, and then we'll talk about the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, Part 2. Uh, the second part of the FTC you really need to make sure you understand. Okay, it will make your life ten times easier, but you have to pay attention to what I tell you. Okay, so you can do it the long way or you can do it the fast way. So that's what we're talking about. So right here it says sketch the curve and find the total area, which is the distance traveled between the curve and the given interval uh, on the x-axis. Okay, so our function is the sine of x, and we're going from zero to three pi over two. Um, we're not going to use the calculator. I will show you on the calculator, but it says when you are using your calculator, make sure you take the absolute value. So what the calculator will take into account for you once you put the absolute value in is wherever your values will be negative, meaning where your graph falls below the x-axis. So this is what I wanted to show you. So if I were to graph this function, um, this is a sine curve, so you notice we're going from negative 1 to 1. So if this is 0, um, this would be what, pi over 2, or pi, excuse me, pi over 2 would be here. This is pi, bless you, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. If we were graphing this, right? So what's the pattern for sine? Anyone remember? Sorry. What's the pattern for sine? Where does it start? Does it start at? It starts at 0. Okay, and then where does it go? Up here to our max, right? And then to our 0, and then down to our min. And then technically, if we were going all the way out to 2 pi, we would go here, but we're stopping here right? Only because of this. So if you want, I'll graph the whole thing, but I'll make this last portion dotted. Okay? So then just when you, this is going to be a terrible sketch, but I'll do my best. So good. Okay, thank you. There, I just finished that off, but this is really where we wanted to end because this is where they said we're stopping. Now, here's the big thing. They, meaning whoever's giving me this problem when I say they, uh, want us to find the total area under the curve, which is the total distance traveled, which means this portion of the area, which is really right here, where does it need to go? Yeah, it needs to flip up, meaning it's going to go like this. <coughs> so I'm really looking at this portion also and this. Okay, does everybody understand that? So when I'm looking at the graph, I'm going to cover this up for just a second. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, because I covered up the whole graph. All right, so this portion of the graph is the true graph. So that means this area up here is positive because the area is above the x-axis, true? Okay, and we know that this portion of the graph is below the x-axis. Therefore, that area, just that area, not total area, that area would be considered negative, correct? So if I'm working on this algebraically, meaning I'm not using my calculator, what I need to do is show that I am going to take the opposite or the absolute value, which is negating the negative. Does that make sense? Okay, when you negate a negative, it becomes a positive. So you need to split your intervals up into the positive sections and the negative sections so that you can show algebraically what you are doing. You can't just put an absolute value on there. You gotta show whoever's reading this problem what you have done algebraically. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna split the integral. All right, so to find the total area, we're gonna find the area under the curve like this. And what we already have that is above the x-axis goes from zero to pi. And what is the function? Sine of x dx right? Then it would be plus, because we're going to add these two areas together, but we want to negate, meaning take the opposite of this negative area. We know that the area is negative y. I said it like four times. Because the graph is below the x-axis. So when, when I negate it, I'm actually flipping it up here, but you're showing it algebraically. Does that make sense? You have to be specific. So then it's going to be the integral from where to where? Perfect, pi to 3 pi over 2, and I'm going to put the opposite of the sine of x dx here. Okay? So this is showing that you're flipping up. All right, so now we're just going to integrate. So what do I take the derivative of to get the sine? Negative, negative cosine. Yeah, so this is negative cosine 
of x to be evaluated from 0 to pi plus what happens here? It's just cosine. Okay, so then it's the cosine of x from pi to 3 pi over 2. Okay, think about this. Pi to 3 pi over 2, that is in the third quadrant. Is cosine positive or negative there? Ooh, so see how that works? So I just, I definitely made everything positive. All right, so let's evaluate. So we've got, I'm going to put the opposite on the outside and just say cosine of pi, because so it's f of b minus f of a, okay, plus f of b minus f of a, okay? So cosine of pi is negative 1, right? Minus 0, excuse me, lie, minus 1. So this is negative 1 minus 1. What is that value? But I'm, it's the opposite of this, right? So this is positive 2 plus this is what's cosine of 3 pi over 2, <coughs> excuse me, 0, right? And then what's cosine of pi? So it's minus a negative 1. So this is plus 1. Now, if I hadn't taken the opposite of that, wouldn't that be minus 1? So that this, I, I have to be careful. So this answer, the total area is 3. Calculators. Let's look up here. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into y sub 1, and I'm just going to put my function in there. In this case, it's the sine of x. This is going to make my life easier, I hope. Uh, let me check my mode. Check, check, check. All right. I just want to make sure everybody's ready before I do this. Yep. Flush left. Sorry. Okay. So what I'm going to do is because, let's say I wasn't sure what the graph looked like, I just want to be safe. So I'm just going to take the absolute value of the whole thing. The calculator will do all the work for me. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into alpha window and we grab our integral, which is option number four. We are going from where to where? Zero to, th yep, three pi divided by two. Okay, now I need to take the absolute value. There are lots of different places that you can find absolute value, but I'm going to go into, I want to say alpha window. Huh? I was right. Alpha window, it's the very first one, absolute value. So I'm going to press enter. Look at that. Where's my function? Where'd I put it? Yes, alpha trace, enter, so I don't have to retype it. What if it's really, really long? I'm lazy, 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 and I'm integrating with respect to what? That's true. Press enter, drum roll. Ta-da. Yeah. Questions, yes. Four. Truncating is at four. So one, two, three, four. Oh my gosh, it's exactly right. Wow. Yeah. Okay, questions on that. So you've seen how to do it in the calculator and how to do it by hand. Total area. Everybody good so far? Okay, you got to remember where this is in the calculator. All right, let's talk about FTC part D. All right, so fundamental theorem of calculus part two. FTC part two. So again, your function must be continuous on an interval. And if little f has an antiderivative on that <laughs> interval, um, and a is any point in the interval, then the function indicated by capital F is defined as the following. f of x, meaning your original, okay, is equal to the integral from a to x of f of t dt. Tell me what you notice about that. Yeah, you got all kinds of letters in there, right? We've got an A, we've got an X, uh, and then all of a sudden they become T's. All right, so what this is saying is, is that your antiderivative, or basically your original function indicated by the capital letter F, um, you can actually use what's called the fundamental theorem of calculus if and only if your lower limit, so I'll use a different color, your lower limit right here is any constant value, 0, negative 3, 17, 185, negative 222, this has to be any constant. Question. 
What if my constant was up here and my x was down here? What could I do? Yep, take out a negative, flip it over. Perfect. And then, and then, this right here, okay, is some variable. But what you have to remember is these variables have to be the same. So see, this, if this is an x, this is an x. If this is a j, what does this have to be? A j. Typically, it's an x, okay? Now, they chose t just like we chose u for u sub. So this right here, t dt, is considered what they say is a dummy variable. <laughs> Be nice. Okay? So it is just a random, so, but they stick with t. Okay? So f of t dt. So what they're saying about this notation is... This is an antiderivative of f, meaning f prime of x is equal to f of x for each x in the interval. Or here's the notation. What does this notation mean right here? Can someone remind me? I forget. Take the derivative. It's, it's a command, right? You, you haven't taken the derivative. It's saying take the derivative. So here, take the derivative okay, of the integral the derivative of the integral. What's the relationship of the two? They're opposites, right? It's like two times one half. What happens? Yeah. Okay. So this says take the derivative of the integral from a to x of f of t dt and it's equal to f of x. Okay. So here's the key thing. First of all, this is telling you to take the derivative. This right here is a variable. This is our constant. If this is our variable and the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us these two right here, you guys said are opposites of each other, they literally just put this in here. So instead of a t, that variable replaces that. And what do you have? f of x. So it takes all the derivative and integral stuff away. These two are opposites of each other. And this is the answer that you get. Okay, you have the derivative of the integral. So I'm going to show you two things. How this works if you do it the long way or if you do it the short way. So here they've done all the work, but I'm going to show it to you. So this is the long way. Long. So we're looking just at this portion right here. Okay, It says integrate from 1 to x t cubed dt. So we're only looking at this portion. Oops. Well, there goes that. We're only looking at this. You can look at the work, but it doesn't mean anything until you've actually done it. So what is the integral of t cubed dt? What is the integral? One fourth t to the fourth power to be evaluated from one to x. Those are my bounds. I know x is a variable, that's fine. And remember, it's f of b minus f of a. So let's plug in f of b. So this is going to be x to the fourth over four, or one fourth times x to the fourth. I just make a substitution. So if this was like a seven, wouldn't I put the seven in for t? Well, right now it's an x, so you put it in. Minus f of a. What's f of a? It is one fourth, because it's one to the fourth power, which is one times one fourth is one fourth. Now, I have to take the derivative of this with respect to x. That's what this is saying up here, right? This is the long way. So now I have to take the derivative. So this right here, I have to take the derivative, d dx. I had to squeeze that in. Uh, what's the derivative of 1 fourth? Zero. It's a constant, right? I'm doing the easy part first. Now I want to take the derivative of essentially, so d dx, of 1 fourth x to the fourth power. What's the derivative of x to the fourth? Derivative, 4x cubed. See, you got to think, right? I'm like, wait, do I add? Do I subtract? So this is 1 fourth times 4x cubed, which is just x cubed. Do you guys see how they got their answer here? Well, that's a lot of work, right? Let me show you the short way. You guys ready? Okay. Here is my notation. It says take the derivative of the integral. So what does a derivative and an integral do to each other? Yeah, check you later, but it's with respect to x.
So if you notice on the top, I have my variable x, right? They match up. And what do I have on the bottom that I have to have? Constant. Yes, I have my constant. So here's the shortcut. You take the variable here and you plug it in for the t and everything else goes away. Here's the key thing though. You must also take the derivative of the upper limit as a variable. What's a derivative of x? It's 1. So in this case, by definition, it goes away. I'm going to show you when it's something other than x, but your answer is just x cubed. I'd rather do this than, what do you think? Now, I'm going to show you more examples so that you can see how it works because seeing it just one time, it's not really good enough, I don't think. Okay, but you have to understand the fundamental.